Welcome to Wellspring on the Air. I'm Nicole Alfonso, a therapist at Wellspring and the host of today's show. Now, today's show is intended for mature audiences only. At this moment, I would ask that you pause the show or change the station and come back at a more convenient time when you're not with your children. You can always access our podcast through our website at wellspringmiami.org in our blog section. The title of today's show is Suicide, Understanding and Prevention. With me today to discuss this important topic is Don Plummer. Together, we want to tell you about how to understand and learn about prevention of suicide. So stay with us. We've got some really good information just for you. All right. Welcome, Don, to the show. Thank you um, for, you know, just participating, uh, choosing this topic, this very important topic uh, that we need to be talking more about. Would you please uh, take a moment to introduce yourself to our audience? Yes. Hello. My name is Dawn Plummer. I am currently a registered mental health counselor in her intern, but not for long. I will be fully licensed very soon. Um, and I've been working with Wellspring since 2019. And I, um, with regards to this topic and kind of my experience with it, currently I am trained in um, a assessment and management program called CAMS, which actually specifically targets suicidality. So um, it's called the Collaborative Assessment and Management of Suicidality. I have training in that. Um, I have been on uh, various panels here in Miami uh, with regards to the topic of suicide um, on this very subject of prevention and awareness. And so that is me. This yeah. is a subject that I feel is very important, not just um, personally, but to the community as well. And um, simply because everybody's kind of affected by it. And uh, I'm very glad that we are talking about it today. Yes. And it, it's, it is a topic that is kind of not spoken, right? We, we don't want to talk about it. It's scary to talk about. And so we're diving in. We're talking about it today. It's important to feel comfortable talking about it. So thank you again, Don. So let's yeah. dive in. Why is it important to bring awareness to suicide? It is important, um, you know, and it's I, just a little add in, which is kind of off uh, the script is um, I'm very proud of Wellspring because we've actually done three podcasts before this podcast on the subject of suicide. So even though there are a lot of myths about suicide and talking about suicide, Wellspring has stepped up to the plate and is really bringing awareness and trying to um, uh, bring help mm -hmm. to people who are kind of suffering from suicidal thinking and for families who are kind of impacted by a loved one who is suicidal. So A, I just wanna say that I'm very proud of Wellspring for, um, being there. Uh, so going back to your question, uh, why is suicide, why is it important to bring awareness to suicide and why is it important to talk about it? Um, one of the major things is that suicide affects and impacts all ages, all populations, all genders. And um, therefore, if we're not really aware of people who are having suicidal thoughts or how suicide, um, where it comes from, why it happens, what it is exactly. If we're not aware of these things, how can we actually find solutions? How can we help if we're not aware? It's almost like, um, you know, if we weren't aware, we all live in Florida here, you know, if we are aware that hurricanes exist, mm. how are we going to know what to do about them when they hit us? And so I think that's one of the major things about suicide is that it is so life and death that we want to know we need to be prepared so that we can um, prevent. Yes. So tell us about exactly what is suicide. Define that for us. So we start right at, you know, what is it? Mm -hmm. um, explain that to us. Okay. So, um, you know, it sounds self-explanatory and it's a very much in our, our culture uh, as far as like television shows, people are starting to be more aware and things are starting to happen more on the subject. But basically the basic definition of suicide is when a person harms themselves with the objective of ending their life and they die as a result. Now it's 
different from a suicide attempt. Um, a suicide attempt is when a person harms themselves with the objective of ending their life and they do not die. Mm -hmm. So you can have, and then there's suicide ideology or suicidal thinking. These are when people are thinking about suicide, they might have a plan. Um, they might know how they might know how they're going to do it. They're, they might know what they're going to use. They might actually have it. They might have even done some rehearsing for it, but they actually have not attempted suicide. So we have really three terms here. We have suicide, we have suicidal attempt, and we have suicide, suicidal thinking or suicide ideology. Mm. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, and it is um, important to know the terms because I think a lot of times, especially maybe in the media or with people who aren't very well informed, they want to use the terms like committing suicide or they want to use um, maybe uh, successful suicide. They were successful or they failed. They had a suicide. And those terms were actually starting to move away from mm -hmm. because, you know, with uh, committing suicide, it almost implies that this was something that they were doing on purpose and willfully. Whereas um, as we get more and more into like the why people attempt suicide or commit suicide, um, they are, that word has a lot to do with just implying that it was like a deliberate attempt and they really were planning to do this because they just wanted to. Whereas suicide, uh, people who are suicidal are really thinking that this is their only option. Right, and it's not necessarily, I, I do wanna die, it's I want the pain to end or I want the discomfort or whatever is kind of underneath, right? And so the, the term we do use is, death by suicide, correct? Yeah, it, it's um, a suicide, a, to die from a suicide attempt or die from suicide or attempted suicide. So attempted uh, or died from a suicidal attempt, usually those are softer and they, they kind of encompass a little bit more of the understanding that this was not something that one, as with like a successful suicide, it's something to be celebrated or two, uh, they failed at suicide, which is something to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. It's, this is something that is, mm -hmm. and it's kind of neutral by saying that. So we're yeah. going for these more neutral terms. Yeah, so there is a myth about um, talking about this topic, right? And asking, someone about suicide. Could you talk about that briefly? Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because that myth seems to just want to stick. And I think it's just because it's such a weighty topic that we are afraid to, to broach it. But in fact, the reason why the belief of talking about suicide is a myth is because actually talking about suicide by, by talking about suicide in a healthy way, in a way that says, I care about you and I care about what you're going through and what's going on with you, that is actually more, that is more preventative. That actually is going to help lower and decrease suicidal attempts. Because um, when we understand that suicide is coming from pain, mm. Sometimes it's, um, you know, we'll, we'll, once again, we're going to go into like, what are the warning signs of suicide? But sometimes it's just a person's experience is causing them pain. Mm. And when somebody is in pain, having somebody come alongside you and be there mm. and walk with you, actually it, right? acknowledging yeah. it, it helps with that pain, they're actually helping to bear that burden. Yeah. So that that talking piece is pretty critical. So it, that myth is, I think, out of all of the myths that come with suicide, that one to me is the one that we want to always, with every conversation, remind ourselves, talking about suicide does not put suicide in somebody's head. Talking about suicide, noticing and saying, hey, 
Are you thinking about killing yourself? Are you thinking about, are you suicidal? Mm -hmm. Saying that and, and acknowledging that. And if, even if the person's like, no, why would you think that? Following up with just, you know, I noticed something was going on with you and I, I just wanted you to know that I care. That is very powerful. And it's not something that um, should be glossed over, should be, you know, hidden or just observed. Yeah, that's really important. And I'm, I'm thankful that you shared that because so many times it's hard to ask that question, right? But it might be that the most important question you ask. Yeah, right? yes, absolutely. absolutely. So let's see, is it common to have suicidal thoughts and what may cause people to have these thoughts, Dawn? That is a great question, Nicole, thank you. Um, it is not common. And I want to kind of maybe uh, draw, uh, like explain this a little bit more because I don't want people who have suicidal thinking or are, are currently thinking about, you know, suicide um, to, to feel like they uh, are abnormal in any way or that they're, they're damaged in any way. Mm -hmm. But it's important to recognize that, you know, suicide has very rarely does it have one determining cause and often people who are su suicidal have psychological, um, biological, or and or social issues going on that are causing this thinking. By psychological, um, I'll just throw out some statistics here. Uh, about 90% of people who have been, who have been are or have actually died by suicide, they have been diagnosed or were diagnosed with a mental illness such as depression or bipolar or borderline or um, the majority, however, 80% of people who are suicidal usually have de depression. Hmm. So when we think about it, the majority of people who are currently experiencing suicidal thinking, who are suicidal, they have depression. Depression is a mental health disorder. So that we're talking that, that can, can be, be treated. treated. Yeah, actually, 95% of people with depression can be treated successfully. So when we think about common, we could say, well, it happens. It's there, but it's not something that's just part of the natural human experience mm -hmm. or part of the human experience. It's something that is caused by a variety of issues, mm -hmm. one of which is a psychological or a mental health issue. Um, biological issues can do with like chemicals in our brain. Mm -hmm. I know that when somebody has low serotonin reservoirs can have, are more prone to depression mm -hmm. and therefore more prone to suicidal thinking. Um, if they have somebody in the family who has had, um, who has actually could, uh, attempted a suicide or um, has a, um, actually died by suicide, mm -hmm. that increases the risk, you know, um, it was social. If you're going through something, you're having legal problems, you're losing friends, you know, these are things that while they happen in the human experience, if they're happening all at once, mm. we don't know where people's limits are. Yeah. You know, your limit and my limit are different. Mm -hmm. But what we do know is when people have hit their limit, they are likely, it is, it is very realistic for us to understand that they are, they may mm -hmm. attempt suicide mm -hmm. or may be thinking about it. Okay. Thank you, Don. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and take a short break and thank one of our sponsors who makes the production of our podcast possible. When we come back, we'll hear more from Don about warning signs and challenges those with suicidality face.
Welcome back to Wellspring on the Air. This is Nicole Alfonso. If you're just joining our show, our topic today is suicide, understanding, and prevention. So far today, we've talked about why it's important to bring awareness to suicide. If you joined us late, you can find us on your favorite podcast channel on Wellspring on the Air or on our website blog page at wellspringmiami.org. Just search for this topic. I do want to remind uh, our listeners that today's show is intended for mature audiences only at this moment. Um, I would ask you to pause or change the station and come back at a more convenient time. If you have children with you, you can always access any of our podcasts through our website at wellspringmiami.org in our blog section. Okay, Don, let's let's keep going here. Um, What are some warning signs and challenges Mm -hmm. that a suicidal person might face and Mm -hmm. how can you know we be uh helpful in preventing um suicidality okay thank you for that question um i think i'll start with maybe a statistic that just is that about 90 percent of people who are experiencing thoughts of suicide or have attempted suicide um actually have they exhibit clues. Mm. About 90% of people exhibit clues. Now, which is why we bring awareness, because if you don't know what the clues are, how are you going to know if somebody is um, suicidal or not? So some of the clues um, that a person who is suicidal can do is usually um, if you're noticing some preparation or planning, and what that could look like is something focal or behavioral. So uh, if I am preparing uh, for a suicide attempt, I might be starting to talk to my friends and family or my coworkers in a, in a way that sounds like I'm going on a trip, maybe a long trip and I might not be coming back from this trip. So it's, you know, well, you know, I'm not gonna see you again. Um, I, it, you know, it, it, it was really good to meet you or be a part of, I'm so glad that you were part of my life, you know, starting to say like goodbyes Mm -hmm. in some ways, and maybe they're not as obvious as these two examples. Um, Behavioral would be is if they're starting to give things away. Um, Maybe they're giving away things that are precious to them that previously meant a lot to them in some way, or were very expensive or things that they, you know, work very hard to get. Um, Those are some of the more obvious uh, warning signs. Um, But there are some other, there are more warning signs that are are a little bit more subtle. Some of it would be like maybe they're deviating from their normal routine. Actually, you and I talked about that, how something they're, you know, maybe it's a behavior they've always done. All of a sudden they're not doing it. Extreme mood shifts are also some warning signs that people can pay attention to. Um, uh, Increases in like just really hazardous behavior or, um, you know, just really impulsive behavior, or if they have a history of that. Uh, Recent life stressors. If somebody has like, maybe they lost a loved one, had a miscarriage, you know, somehow, you know, maybe they even like lost a job or they have difficulty or they're unable to to kind of fulfill roles at home or at work or school, or they're withdrawing from these things. So we're looking for changes in behavior. We're looking for withdrawals. We're looking for mood shifts, dramatic mood shifts. Sometimes, and here's the interesting thing, you may notice that somebody is being feeling down. Maybe they've been really depressed and you've noticed this. And then the next time you see them, they're calm, they're happy. A lot of times people think, oh, they're good. That actually may not be, you know, if nothing really changed, if they never really got help, just because they're calm and happy doesn't mean that they actually are fine or they're not suicidal anymore. It can actually mean that they're feeling calm because they have a solution which is, you know, death, death is their solution. And so they're feeling calm because they've committed to this. So that is definitely not something you want to kind of relax your guard about. Um, If they have a history of past attempts, so you want to, you want to be careful about that. Um, 
conversation about, you know, hopelessness for the future. Like, you know, I wish I could die wanting to harm themselves. Life is not worth living. All of these kind of words, um, feeling worthless, feeling taught, you know, very despairing, hopeless, pessimistic to look forward to maybe also yeah you know. yeah nothing to look forward to um some other kind of more behavioral clues are if they're stockpiling things that are lethal you know or if they're looking it up on the internet now with the internet the internet makes things easy and convenient including access to lethal means so if they're stockpiling pills um if they're uh somehow looking up how to how to how to attempt suicide these are you know checking your your young, especially more for younger people but also for older people if you're like noticing these things mm. in a family member that they're they're looking these things up don't take it as like idle curiosity don't don't take it as just um something they're interested in take it seriously mm. um if they um if they're using substances, uh, specifically, you know, alcohol, um, that actually can exacerbate your suicidal thinking. It can make it worse. So that is something that you want to be aware of. Um, you know, as I was kind of going through all of the warning signs, I realized I'm like, right now I've, I've, written down like 20 plus. I'm like, there, there are signs. Mm -hmm. We just have to know what to look for. Um, but in either indirectly or directly, the person is sending out messages that they don't think that they're going to be here for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that it's important that when you kind of know maybe what's going on, in your friend, your family, your coworkers' world, or if you don't know, but you're noticing some things, ask them, ask them, you know, because basically a person is feeling that their life is so unbearable that death is their only escape. Yeah. Their, their vision has narrowed. Yeah. So if you're having thoughts of suicide, tell someone, with suicide support hotlines and and uh, text li uh, text lines, you can get reach out to someone right away. And so that hotline is one 273 talk, and uh, the text line is um, you can text hello to seven four one seven four one, and just get someone to talk to right away. You know, sometimes maybe people don't want to talk to their own family because maybe they're ashamed or they feel like they're not going to understand. And so there are others that can help. So now regarding um, us as professionals, how can professionals assist and help in suicide prevention? I'm glad you asked that because um one of the things about suicide is there is this sense that nobody really understands what I'm going through. Nobody understands me. And therapists, we are actually trained to, to manage those kind of negative thoughts. We're there to, we're actually there to listen, mm -hmm. to help the person vocalize what their experience is and to empathize with that. And so that's a, that's a really big component of what therapy offers. Um, and, and it's important to know that if we, if we understand that the majority of people who are suicidal have, are, have depression, um, depression and depression can be treated, mm -hmm. then we can bring that to the table as therapists. And um, you know, sometimes people who are suicidal they may not believe that they can be helped, which is part of that narrow thinking that, you know, um, there's either, you know, suffering or death mm -hmm. the, that we call that in therapy, splitting thinking or all or nothing thinking. Mm -hmm. We know that through different types of therapeutic um, modalities, therapeutic practices, we can work with the client to kind of help that thinking to change that thinking. Yeah. 
to help them um, get to the heart of that thinking. But what we do first off, so I'll just give you kind of an overview of what you can look for when you're doing therapy is you first, we're gonna assess you. We're gonna help on you, we're gonna help ourselves and help you understand what is the risk here? How how are we? Are we, you know, are we in imminent danger? Mm -hmm. Are we just thinking about it because life's gotten really hard? Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna we're gonna see the warning signs, and we're gonna collaborate with you on a safety plan. Mm -hmm. So that's step one. Step two is that we're gonna address the underlying issues. What are causing the problem? Mm -hmm. We're gonna help you to kind of find things to buffer. Maybe we're going to help you with some skills training as far as, you know, life feels unbearable. Maybe my coping skills aren't that strong. I need, I need help with my decision making because right now my decisions are just these two options. Mm -hmm. We're going to help you see more than those two. Um, and then we're going to treat those issues. And then lastly, we're going to provide that relationship that might be lacking. We're going to help you build that support system that maybe you don't have. We're going to help you with resources, mm -hmm. you know, and, and give you something to help you cope when there's a crisis. I always like to use my, my hurricane analogy when we talk about this, because I, I'm like, when we have a hurricane and we don't have a hurricane preparedness kit, we're usually that much more frightened, we're that much more emotional. Mm -hmm. But when we're prepared for a hurricane, and for us who have been through Hurricane Andrew, and I'm dating myself, and we've actually experienced a pretty bad hurricane, then we know, hey, I can survive this. There are ways to survive without having to choose these two options. There's more than one. Mm -hmm. So it's important to know that therapy is actually very critical mm -hmm. to the treatment and prevention of suicide. Yes, thank you, um, Don. Now let's talk about what family and friends can do to prevent suicide. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I think it's very scary for family and friends when they, um, you know, see these behaviors maybe, or just um, get, get, someone to tell them like, yeah, I'm suicidal. The, you know, what do they do with that? Right. So could you talk to us about that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, so family and friends are often the first to recognize the warning signs or recognize that their person, their, their loved one has changed in some ways or that there's something wrong. So they're often whether they like it or not, they're often the front line mm. defense. And so um, when they see these warning signs, if they're aware of what they are and they're prepared to do something about it, then we are talking, you know, we are actually working toward reduction and prevention. Mm. So what they can do is if somebody tells them that they're wanting to kill themselves, that they are suicidal. You don't wanna leave them alone. Um, you do want to, um, to get them help. And if they're, if they're in imminent danger, you wanna take them to the nearest hospital or you wanna call 911. What you do not want to do is you do not wanna promise that you will keep their suicidal thoughts a secret because secret keeping is dangerous and secret keeping is going to prevent you from saving their life. Mm, yes. And you told me something at the beginning uh, that actually really is a, a great story to kind of um, really exemplify what I'm saying about yes. that secret keeping. So I, I will share, um, when I was in high school, I had my best friend um, attempted a suicide by taking pills. And my best friend and I were really close. We, you know, um, we, we lived, we were in boarding school together and we had, um, our doors right in front of each other. And her routine in the mornings was, you know, she would get up like one hour earlier than me and get, you know, get ready, do her hair, do her makeup. I mean, it was like, and this day she did not do that. She was, she wasn't up 
And so I knocked on the door, knocked on the door. Um, finally, by the time I left the dorm, she was up and in the shower. But I knew something was off because um, that's just not her normal behavior. And so I went to the nurse's station and I said, something's wrong with my friend. Uh, you guys need to check on her. Um, and so I went off to, to class. By the end of the day, I had heard that my friend had been taken to a hospital, um, to a psychiatric hospital. And so, of course, at this moment, as a friend, I have these feelings of guilt because I told on her, right? Or I, you know, kind of said something maybe I shouldn't have said, but in the end, I actually did the right thing. And I think this is important for people to listen to because don't be afraid of speaking up when you feel like someone might be in danger or something's off with someone because I, I, I obviously won't take credit for this, but I, in a way, uh, saved my, my friend from another attempt possibly um, she was taken to the hospital. I was finally able to speak to her and she was grateful. She was, she was grateful that I did that. Um, I was in, um, I was in boarding school and she, um, requested that I visit her in a, in the psychiatric hospital. And I did my first time, uh, I went and, and I visited her there and, um, she was just, she was just grateful. So I think, uh, we really do need to pay attention um, to the people we love and be be mindful of how they're changing their behaviors, what's different, uh, isolation, things that, that are not normal and uh, have candid conversations um, and tell someone that you feel could help. Like, let's say, you know, you're young and you don't know what to do, then you consult a friend or you consult a parent or you consult a, a mentor or, or a teacher or someone that you think could have better guidance for you on, on what to do next, but don't keep it quiet. Don't keep it a secret. Um, you know, my friend eventually, uh, um, she, she wrote me a poem and, um, it, you know, I think it was something like angel wings or something like very, it was very powerful. And she, you know, I, I, I don't often talk about this, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, we talked still, we, we graduated high school 20 years ago and still to this day, she calls me and uh, it's, 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 I feel really good that I did that, you know, obviously the guilt stuff, you know, but um, I did the right thing, you know, and I, and I just encourage you as you listen, um, speak up, speak up because it, it could save someone's life. Yeah, I think what you're talking about is so powerful because what we're doing here is we're trying to change the conversation. We're trying to change the wor the wording from, you know, I'm telling on somebody mm -hmm. to I am saving somebody, you know. And when you think about it that way, and it, it takes away a little bit of that guilt because you're like, no, I don't well, feel bad about yeah. saving somebody. That's right you know, yeah. and, and that way we are doing our part mm -hmm. because it does take everybody yeah. because the thing is suicide affects, um, families yes. because they have to deal with the aftermath of, uh, and it's, you know, somebody who has attempted suicide and died because of it. Yeah. Um, friends also are experiencing loss family experiences loss and they have to go through that loss and figure out what life looks like without that person there. Yeah. Um, they communities lose people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, we've had some high profile suicides. I think if you, you know, um, kind of look in Hollywood people yeah. who, yeah. and what a, what a gap they make mm -hmm. in, in our worlds. Yeah. And that's just on a, on a global basis, on a smaller scale, the gap that somebody makes when they, when they attempt a suicide and they, they, they die, it, it impacts not just the family or the friends, it impacts the whole community. Yeah. And so if you are, and because it's that big, everybody has a part to play and we yeah. all can, we can work together on this. Um, for family and friends, 
we have resources therapists are there um, schools actually and this is also why i'm very happy to say that the conversation I'm noticing some changes. Um, it was just in the last couple of years, uh, survivor stories are starting to be more publicly recognized. Um, so people are not just talking about the, the sad part, mm. you know, and, and, and what's happening in the statistics. They're also meeting people who are making it out onto the other side. That's good, yeah. And we're starting to get that into the conversation and that's coming into the culture. Schools are doing more peer support programs mm, yeah. and, and, and certifying teachers to be aware. So they're raising awareness and they're empowering kids to, to move past that feeling of I'm being, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm betraying a trust or I am telling on somebody to being an active peer support, you know? So there, we're moving from, from just this secrecy to this speaking out and being empowered you know, to me, that is extremely, extremely encouraging. That's great. Definitely. For sure. Thank you, John. So we're like over our time, but let's wrap up with the Bible. What okay. is, what, what, to, give us a verse or talk to us a little briefly about okay. um, suicide in the Bible. Yeah. So I wanted to really kind of understand like what, what, God thinks, and you know, I'm not going to get, I'm not a theologian, so I'm not going to go down the road as to whether it's right or not right, or what God thinks about suicide and our suicidal people going to heaven. I'm not going there. Where I wanted to go was just uh, to help people understand that suicide happened in the Bible and um, people with suicidal thinking were were actually mentioned in the Bible, because I think that it's important to know how relatable the Bible is and how God understood the human experience and the human pain and, and what kind of thinking comes with that. Because when you think about it, um, Judas, he is a, he committed suicide or he, he died by suicide. Um, Samson, even though he was, you know, trying to get revenge, he died by suicide. He pulled um, temple, the temple down and he was in it. And there, uh, you know, King Saul in the Old Testament, the guy who came before David, you know, uh, he, he died on his own sword. Mm. So it's there, mm -hmm. which means that God understands. Um, there are several, like I said, of those who thought about it, like Moses, he was constantly like, just take me now, Lord, my, my weight is too heavy. My pain is too great dealing with these people too much. Um, Job was another one. He was constantly when he had his losses, he was constantly wondering why he was born. Yeah. Um, and there was an, uh, even a prison guard. He's only known as prison guard uh, when I believe it was Paul. You know, he, he thought Paul, the apostle, had escaped and he was about to take his own life before Paul intervened. Hmm. And so I bring that up to say that God understands. And these people I mentioned were an integral part of the Bible. Their lives mattered. And God didn't send his son into the world. So John 3, 17 says he didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save those through, save the world through him. So God has compassion on us. And just the, like those who are standing on the side of rescue and response, when somebody is suicidal, God cares. Mm. And he's aware of how bad you are feeling. He knows, he understands that you may not believe that you can be helped, mm -hmm. but he is here and we're here. Mm -hmm. So it's suicidal, suicide is preventable, mm -hmm. but that's why action and treatment is necessary. And we wanna, I'll just give you the final quote from T.D. Jakes who says, we never wanna make a permanent decision on a temporary situation. I add temporary feeling 
because as we know, things come and go, feelings come and go. Well, Dawn, thank you so much. It is time to close out the show. You've been amazing. Thank you for um, this topic and for joining us today and shedding light on the topic of suicide. We hope you learned some valuable information and felt better informed about this important topic. And thank you for joining our show today. Again, if you joined this program midstream, you can find this show and others on podcast at Wellspring on the Air or on our blog on wellspringmiami.org. The title of today's show again was Suicide, Understanding, and Prevention. Encourage us and let us know you're listening by sending comments or questions to on the air at wellspringmiami.org. It is time to wrap up. This is Nicole Alfonso with Wellspring on the Air because hearts and minds matter.